This is a dynamic symmetry armature. According to Jay Hambridge, it can also be divided to 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 root rectangles. I'm just gonna give you the armatures right here in this video, so that you don't have to waste 30 minutes of your life learning about the mathematical formula to create your own aspect ratios. And I'm going to explain at the end of this video why I don't think you should waste this time. Jay Hambridge thought that this is the perfect way to construct a composition for your image. His idea was that once you align your leading lines of the picture, you will have the most harmonic looking painting possible. There are interesting points to this. One of them is coincidences. Coincidences are lines and points on the painting that all follow a certain line where you want to lead the eye towards. This is a handy tool especially when you want to point the eye towards the point of interest. In this case it's the center of the image and I'm going to use these coincidences to direct the eye towards this alpaca. The way the armature also has these very contrasting diagonal lines it also helps you create more line rhythm and line rhythm can come from several things but the way the dynamic symmetry grid works, it makes you use line rhythm that has a lot of opposing diagonals. And this creates a lot of visual interest. Usually when you have lines that are all following the same line, you don't build contrast or interest in the same way. And the way dynamic symmetry grid is constructed, it makes you do all of these contrasting diagonal lines around the center of your subject. And here we can see that the main subject is contrasting with the background because of these opposing lines. Another composition tool that I'm using in this picture is enclosure. And this is kind of like vignetting your main subject around other things that creates this kind of visual frame to direct the eye towards the center of the image. And especially since this alpaca is running, I want to make sure that the eye doesn't kind of like fly off the image, especially because there's a direction of looking in this picture. I don't want the people to be looking at where this alpaca is running. I want this to be the main subject. So I'm using all these elements like the foreground grass and the clouds above and on the sides to enclose the image so that you will focus on the center of the piece. One of the things that I'm struggling in this painting is the rule of odds and I'm gonna explain that right now. Usually in composition, if you just have an odd number of similar elements, it somehow looks more dynamic. And dynamic is kind of the theme of this whole painting. I don't want the painting to look too static. And where I'm running into the problem of rule of odds is when I first drew these two alpacas to the background and I thought that okay we have three alpacas now we are following the rule of odds and it's more dynamic composition but rule of odds only works when there are similar enough elements in this instance the alpaca is not similar enough with the foreground element because they are so drastically different in size so I need to follow the rule of odds with this approximately same size of alpacas so that's why I drew in a few more alpacas to kind of like make that background look less like they are arranged in this sort of like evenly numbered sides on left and right. So there are two alpacas on the right and three alpacas on the left. So that's five and it's not four, it's not two, it's five. So that's the rule of odds. One thing that I'd recommend being aware of when you are using dynamic symmetry armature is the corners because all of these diagonal lines are leading towards the corner of the image. Usually your main subject of your painting isn't at the corners, so I recommend cutting off these diagonal lines early enough so that you are not leading the eye towards the corners of the image. This is just a general rule, but I recommend that you don't focus attention towards the corners of the image as a whole because that pulls you out of the experience that the painting is real because whenever you draw attention to the fact that the corners feel physical like for example if you're trying to fit in a character arm or head in the picture so that it just fits if the corners of the painting feel physical 
then the illusion of the reality of the painting, in my opinion, breaks. So in dynamic symmetry armature, I recommend using these diagonals whenever they are helpful to guide the attention towards the main point of interest, but when they are just leading the eye towards the corners of the image, then I recommend completely blocking of those lines. What I want everybody to know from this dynamic symmetry grid is, this is just one dude, Jay Hambridge, who invented this grid around 1920s. This is not how all art works. This is just one of the many tools of composition that you can use and you don't have to use it. For this painting, I didn't have the grid on when I started painting. It just came in as a helpful guide to help me arrange the lines toward the end. And I don't recommend like constructing any paintings from scratch so that you have some kind of like a rigid grid on because I think that will just like kill your creativity at some point. So this is just one way to compose an image. I would strongly recommend not using the dynamic symmetry as some sort of a composition religion and get too obsessed about this, because this is just one way to compose an image. It's not the right way and there are no wrong ways to compose an image. A lot of people hate on the rule of thirds like it's a recipe for bad compositions. It's not. You can use rule of thirds whenever it's appropriate to the image that you are painting. Just think about the story that you are painting and what kind of composition would convey that story the best. Of course, dynamic symmetry and rule of thirds, they can both be really bad ideas for composing an image if it's just not right for the story. And there are many more other ways. If you have followed the video thus far, we have already learned these other composition tools like coincidences, line rhythm, enclosure, and rule of odds. And we learned how to avoid corners when there are diagonals directing the eye towards those corners or making the edges feel too physical. And this is just tip of the iceberg. There are many other ways to compose an image. There are ovals, masses, groups, and arabesques. All of these are just options that you can pick and use whenever it feels right for the image. And they are helpful to create cohesion to the image. For example, this painting, I felt that the composition is so crazy, it just felt kind of like scary at one point. So in the end, I took out this dynamic symmetry grid and I overlaid it on top of the painting. And then I noticed that, yeah, actually a lot of the elements almost line up to this composition grid. So I just pushed small elements around to make it align better and direct the eye towards the center of the painting and create those line rhythm moments around the painting. It's not something that I had on at the beginning of the painting. It was just like a helpful tool to help me have more cohesion in the diagonals of this piece. So with this information, now you have one more tool in your bag of tricks on how to create an image and how to have visual cohesion. And I hope that these rules don't feel like restricting, but they can be freeing that when you learn new ways to compose an image, you have more ways to create your stories and not less. With that mindset, go and paint fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay. Bye.